Hi, welcome to the Barnsley Chronicle, where, as ever, I'm joined by Sports Centre Doug O'Kane, and we're going to preview Barnsley's match against Ipswich Town. I asked Barnsley's head coach, Michael Duff, about the threat that Ipswich pose, and in particular, former Barnsley striker Connor Chapel. Ipswich is top for passes and pass completion, and, and, and all that. Obviously, a really good possession based team. Do you, do you expect that style here, or do you think they might, they might tweak it a little bit against you, obviously, with your pressing? Like I just said, they're, they're the best team in the league when history statistic there. Because you talk about all the, the possession and the, and the passes and the sort of 90 odd goals, but they've got unbelievable amount of clean sheets as well. So that's why they're on such a run, because they do all sides of the game really well. They've got good players, they've got a good manager, and they, I'd imagine they'll come and believe in what they do because it's made them statistically so good and they'll think that they'll come here and, and do exactly the same, I'd imagine. And why wouldn't you? Yeah. Obviously, Con Chaplin is one of their key threats and he, he was here as well. How, how do you plan against a player in such, such good form like him, scoring so many goals? Uh, well, he's a good player. You've got to try and block his um, block his passing lanes, block um, areas that t- to get in the ball, starve him off the ball. So he starts wondering in his areas that we want him to go into. But you look at the squad they've got, he might not start, he might be ill, he might be injured, they'll, they'll bring somebody else in his just as good. The fact that he's saving the team and scored so many goals tells you that he's a good player because they're a brilliant squad. Okay, Doug, so it was another good weekend for Barnsley. I suppose spoiled again by results elsewhere. Yeah, a little bit, uh, of course. Um, yeah, good win, good routine win against Oxford. Played well, played some good football and got a 2 0 win. Um, obviously, a nice story for Slobber and Tanic. Get a couple of goals and just a decent all round performance. Uh, ninth, ninth home win in a row. So, yeah. Plenty of positives at Oak Hall, and then you, you see the top three have won as well, and it just uh, yeah, it's, it's getting harder and harder for the top two. But um, you know, we've obviously got a big game uh, on Tuesday night against the Switch, and it's not over yet for, for the Reds for the automatic promotion. Quite. Do you think that uh, deflates the players a little bit when they've you know they come back into the dressing room all euphoric, and then they, they see the results elsewhere and realise it's sort of been for nothing? Um, well, I mean. Are you keep, yeah. I guess the other way to look at it was if they'd lost or drew, drawn and uh, uh, those results have gone their way, they'd definitely be out of it. So they've kept themselves in it with, with, with that win. But of course, it'd be a lot better if they'd slipped up, especially with the, the fixtures. You know, you thought maybe a Peterborough away might be a tricky one for Ipswich. Obviously, they've gone there one three nil. So fair play to them. There. I think Barnsley see it as we can't control that. So yeah, it's disappointing, but we're not going to let it affect us too much. We'll just keep doing what we do and hope it's enough. So this game's been building for, for quite a while, it's always been on the horizon, obviously when it got pushed back, yeah. it seemed like it's always going to be a big game and uh, that hasn't changed really. No, no, big game. Um, obviously if it had been like two points gap it would be absolutely massive, but uh, still, six, I mean, yeah, fourth against second with a couple of games to go in the, in the season is always going to be a big game and Barnsley, from their perspective, they'll, they'll look to you know, cut that gap like we, like we mentioned, they could half it to three points with a couple of games to go and make the teams above them quite nervous. It's which will be thinking this is a tough game to have just a few games, few uh, weeks before the end of the season when obviously they need to, to get as many wins as they can to come in the top two or maybe win the title. So yeah, a huge amount riding on it for both teams. The Barnsley must be feeling full of confidence at home. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, the first time they've won nine in a row at home in the league in the same season for more than a hundred years. Uh, um, astonishing, really. And yeah, they, they've they've played really well in the vast majority of that those nine games and won them comfortably. Really scoring lots of goals and really getting the fans on their side and playing some good football. It, it seems likely, doesn't it, Doug, that uh, Barnsley are going to be uh, in the playoffs and having that um, as it's confirmed their second leg would be up well as well. Yeah. This is sort of a dress rehearsal, it's going to be a big game, big crowd and um, just getting ready for, for, for the end of the season finale. Yeah, I suppose so, if it, if it has to be the playoffs then they'll, they'll want to finish as, as high as possible and yeah, like you say, um, there'll be a big crowd of 5,000 Ipswich fans apparently, so another decent atmosphere, we've had a few of them against Derby and uh, Sheffield Wednesday and, and games like that, so being another one like that, ho- hopefully from Barnes's point of view they can get the same performance and result. Yeah. What's the team news? Um, well, Nicky Cadden is back uh, from suspension, so uh, he could c- come back in for Zia Larkesh. I think Larkesh has done well, but I think Nicky will probably be uh, back in the team. He's his first choice, and once again, no new injuries. Uh, also, you've got the news of the League One team of the season as well. Uh, any surprises in that for you? 
Well, Matt Anderson's in there. Um, I think he's had, he's had a good season, very good season. I'd probably say Liam Kitchen defensively has been just as good as, as Anderson all season, but I guess Anderson's sort of more well known in terms of he's been around for a while and he's, he's, he's very highly rated, so I kind of understand, and he's a captain, so I kind of understand why he's in there. Uh, I guess the likes of Luke O'Connell might um, uh, be a bit aggrieved to, to miss out because he's been excellent, but I'm sure there's fans of pretty much every team or teams that have had good seasons saying this player should have been in, this player should have been in, but it's just good to have representation of at least one player. I know you've seen practically every team this season, maybe twice on, in some instances. Do you concur with, with most of those selections? Yeah, I think so. It's hard to tell when you only see uh, um, them twice. I mean, the best player I've seen this season has been probably Exeter's Jay Stansfield, but he's only scored really against Barnsley, so it's very odd. Um, but yeah, they, they look like they've obviously tried to share it around the teams that have been in uh, up there in the top six, and they probably could have picked a completely different team and had similar results with uh, with other players from those teams because they've obviously got sort of four or five really strong teams this season. But yeah, I, I don't disagree with it. Remember to subscribe to our page and you will get notifications whenever we upload new video content to YouTube.